bastards. Today uh, I want to talk about a new series I'm, I'm about to make, like with the nuclear disaster survival series. I'm now going to make a series about how to survive in war as a civilian. Um, yeah, because of the whole war in, in Ukraine, it has made me think that war is a bigger possibility in Europe than ever. So, yeah, so um, I want to to help people with ideas about how to survive a war as a civilian. Um, in the series, I'm going to talk about uh, preventive measurements and active measurements uh, civilians can take during a war, like uh, in what uh, stockpiles and uh, how uh, military equipment and people will react uh, during a war, like psychology and such. Uh, I'm going to talk about dangers of a uh, of a uh, Munition, munitions that will be found or uh, or booby traps the such things and uh, how to protect you how to protect yourself during a war and so and so on so yeah um yeah so you will have the first this is the first this is the first uh, part of the series and it will talk about how to uh how do you say this how to uh pre uh how do you say it <laughs> How to take uh, preventive measurements before a war even starts. Uh, a war will usually start with uh, big economical uh, problems, and then it will start uh, to become a uh, yeah. How do you say this? Uh, espionage, sabotage, uh, embargoes, and sanctions and such. And then usually it's a, a conventional conflict uh, with bombardments uh, to soften targets up, uh, infra uh, uh, targeting with rockets for uh, infrastructural uh, places. Uh, of strategic importance, and then the and then the invasion itself by uh, boots on the grounds like mil like soldiers, uh, tanks, and military vehicles. So uh, yeah, that is the. Uh, I will show you now how you can. Uh, in what do you invest or uh, how, what do you stockpile before a war? Uh, I will also talk about the bug out later uh, in of, in later part, but. This is the first part, and uh, it's about stockpiling before a war starts. Uh, during the a war can uh, be devastating. Uh, depends on which situ which uh, uh, place you live in. So uh, try to to have a plan for when when fighting breaks out. Uh, not only fighting with uh, infantry and vehicles, but also bombardments from drones or airplanes or artillery. Uh, especially if you live in uh, big cities, uh, then you're probably a bigger target. Or if you live nearby uh, strategic uh, positions, so have a have a place in your house where you can and uh, get uh, some safety and take shelter from when such things can happen. Uh, what you can do is uh, I have the luck that is, I have a basement in my uh, home, uh, so if there is a bombardment, this will be a good place to hide. You can try to reinforce the basement with uh, something like this. This is some, a support beam that you can place in the middle. Uh, it will not help if everything goes down, but it can prevent some cracking. If you, don't, if you do not uh, have a basement, try to make, make, do a makeshift, uh, like I said before, with a support beam in, uh, the, most, in the center of your, of your house, in a place where that is well supported and less uh, prone to collapsing, or Go like in World War Two. Go into uh, dig uh, a little uh, Anderson shelter in the garden. Uh, yeah, I would say look it up because it's a home. It's something that almost uh, uh, hundreds of thousands of Britons put in their garden to take shelter in during the air raids during the Blitz. So I would advise to to look it up how you, how they did it and how they built it. There is also a Morrison shelter that they. A did make makeshift inside of the buildings themselves, so because for people who didn't have a garden, so that's something you can do at home. Anderson shelter, Morrison shelter, uh, inside of your house, or take refuge in the basement. Um, if you if you live in a city like an apartment, uh, try to find try to plan other places where you would take shelter. In Ukraine, a lot of people who lived in Kiev um, took shelter in uh, in uh, metros. Uh, in underground stations, in uh, cellars of other people, or public shelters if they are uh, that were uh, made by the Ukrainian government. So that's so that's all. Try to plan for some place to take shelter 
try to plan and uh, make plans with the rest of the family, friends, family, um, or your or your children. How t what you would do if the alarm goes off or there is a bombardment? Uh, that's something very important to plan before a war breaks out, so the you, everyone knows what to do or where to go. Have some protective measurements uh, before a war because it will be very difficult to get. During a war is a uh, personal protection against uh, biological, chemical and uh, nuclear warfare. Uh, I would advise to look at my series about uh, how to survive how to survive a nuclear uh, nuclear uh, si uh, situation for civilians. Just uh, these are you will see all the gear that I and how to put a sea bear into it and what you can do in such situations when it happens. But of all those things, uh, if you don't watch the video, at least get a gas mask. Uh, why a gas mask can be handy against if it's CBRN great it can protect against those but also when there is a bombardment you can use it as a protection protect your lungs against dust sand and smoke uh so yeah watch my video about how to survive in a nuclear uh, uh disaster is what i'm trying to say for more details uh, another thing is to plan uh to plan and keep ahead of uh information that possibly could happen uh, have some maps ready uh, of your area and try to learn them uh, not only for a bug out route uh, but also for uh, to learn where the enemy forces will probably invade through uh, like this is a map of Belgium and if you know where the most uh, uh, valuable targets are that a military would try to conquer or to to take in uh then you know where you're not where you should not go on a bug out or go or to take refugee when there are bombardments because you live close by one of those uh targets or um where you where and where you cannot go in case of you want to help family or or go to friends so uh information is key try to stay ahead try to learn from the news through radios uh internet and other sources to know where the where the enemy where uh, where the routes are that the enemy is invading, uh, so you can uh, avoid them. Information, uh, inf uh, knowledge is power. So try to keep ahead of the try to learn about your surrounding and not just to bunker in and just uh, put your head, your fingers in your ears. Always have a bug out bag ready uh, and try to make one before a war starts. Because sometimes uh, during a war, uh, things can escalate quickly. Uh, a lot of people uh, will, uh, there were, in almost every war, there are cases where people took everything they could carry and got away as a ref refugee or uh, during their uh, in a bug out. So always have, uh, before a war, try to make a bug out ready. Uh, so you can, uh, if you need to run or to bug out, that you can do that. Uh, like we can see from the Ukraine, that's a good lesson. We yeah, everyone can learn from it. Uh, we all saw the the miles and miles and kilometers of a uh, traffic uh, because of people were were uh, fleeing from the from the cities, or they went uh, as a ref refugee to other countries, and the roads were packed. Nothing almost moved. So uh, a car is th therefore a car is probably not the it is a, a good uh, bug out vehicle, but you must be you must be aware that the roads will be probably be packed. So for that reason, uh, if it's possible and you have the physique and you don't need to transport people who are sick or have a certain condition, uh, I would advise to get a bug out bike and uh, or a, or a cart. Uh, first of all, the bug out bike um, must be fitted with uh, saddlebags with a basket in the front. And with something on your, with a bug out bag on your back, you can get a long way with it. All right. Uh, yeah. Beside the bug out bag, you can also, if you must buy go by foot or if you live in an apartment and you get can get one of those. Uh, these are one of the cards. You can this uh, type I can uh, put on the back of my bug out bag, so that way I can transport a lot of goods when I need to flee the country or during a war or. Or need to flee flee to a safe spot and hang on for a little bit longer till it's safe to return. Uh, you can carry you can not only put this on the bike, but you can also carry this with your bug out bag and get more supplies. Uh, you can put tools, a tent, 
uh, such setups uh, in so you you have more chance uh, to survive so invest in these things before uh, a war and also you can put your your small children near in because it will be difficult to always carry them or that they they will be quickly tired if they need to walk with their small legs all right uh, before a war uh, two things can be important to gather and that is uh, your personal information uh, like this is a ship that i put uh, that i can put in my uh, bug out bag or just uh, for a bug in uh, for when my house would get hit by a rocket or a or a shell uh, why uh, this ship uh, contains all my information like personal papers documents acts uh, deeds uh, papers from my bank account my uh, insurances my personal information uh, idea uh, identifications and other official papers that i have um, yeah those things take a picture of it and uh, put it on the ship because when your house get bombardment bombarded and you had to flee with your bag out back before the bombardment started or you go into a shelter and you come back and all your papers are burnt or destroyed at least you have this as an official proof for uh, your papers and even if you have to go to in a bug out it's handy to have this uh, all in front because you perhaps lose your papers during the bug out and you need to take uh, take refugee or asylum in another country for when you flee so take a picture of all your official documents take pictures of your family and their information put it all on this so you have you will get faster through immigration and and uh, and government uh, bu bureaucracy is what i'm trying to say so as a preventive measurement, uh, take your informations and put them on a on a chip. Another thing is, uh, before a war, uh, money will get inflated. Usually, get inflated. Economy will be bad, so your money will be less worth than normally. So, before a war, I would always uh, say to invest a part of your cash in gold. Uh, that way, during and after a war, a part of your capital is still protected in a way because gold will always retain a certain amount of of value in in contrary to cash and perhaps uh stocks so and even if you have to flee or take a, be, as a refugee or a bug out you can easily take these pieces of gold in your bug out bag and in a worst case try to barter or if you make a new life somewhere else uh you can some you can start to begin something like uh, with this money you can buy uh, you can start to rent a home uh start up a small business or something something to to integrate with the begin capital so cheap gold is a good preventive thing to do before a war starts uh as a prevent uh prevention for war uh, in a, to have preventive uh, measurements in war have a have a stockpile of foods um these are all bags of rice um yeah i know it's a lot but i'm kind of a, of a rice guy <laughs> so uh these are cheap food that just, and the most important thing is if you have a stockpile of food have food that you can and uh, keep uh, keep in store for a long time. These are bags of white rice. Uh, these can be stored for under the good circumstances, like uh, in a dry, cool, dark place in a vacuum bag. Uh, these can uh, you can keep these for thirty five years. So uh, even uh, with this supply, I can do a long time during a war, uh, even if the war is uh, lasting uh, several years. And you can use it as a bartering item and for people who didn't prepare like family friends that you do not want to starve but if you going to have a food stockpile try to not tell it to everyone uh, do not do like me actually but I i'm doing this so i can help other people by uh learning or or uh inspire them to prepare uh yeah because even uh, it's not only people in your neighborhood that you need to be uh, keep an OPSEC operation security for because perhaps they are desperate and they will try to steal you they talk to the wrong people and criminals will try to take your food supply and sell it on the black market or something uh, just for profit not even because they are desperate and even uh, soldiers and uh, government people because if the if a government is uh, losing a war and they are desperate they can they can confiscate uh, your food stockpile if they know about it or soldiers who are hungry and are nearby and got to know by somehow that you got a food supply they can commandeer it so that's something you need to watch out for and uh yeah so 
these are all just uh, other things uh emergency rations uh just coffee tea chocolate cans with fish with fish uh, uh, which are good uh, sort of proteins canned food couscous uh all the good stuff tins in uh, all in all uh, variety olive oil uh sugar uh this and of course uh some alcohol uh well this will not last long uh but i like my drink uh, sometimes <laughs> All right, um, these are, uh, and also, of course, uh, pasta, which can be stored for 15 years uh, in a in a good uh, way, if you store it right. So, a uh, good food, food supply will will, uh, will, give, will make you, uh, how do you say this? It will uh, make you survive a war longer, that you do not de uh, need to count on uh, government rations or, uh, or the black market for food. All right, when... Before, um, if you don't have a pantry and you need to go to the store, or you do have a stock pantry, but for for to be sure, you want some extra without being a dick and hoarding everything out of the store. Um, I would um, advise to do a do a quick run on basics. Uh, it is something that I uh, did just uh, and right now, just for some extra, and uh, like you can see. These are four bags of rice of each of five kilograms. This is actually a year's worth worth of rice. Uh, five bags of uh, havermout. Uh, how do you say this? Uh, to make porridge. I don't know. Uh, sorry, I do not know the English word for this. But it's uh, oat oatmeal. That's the word. Five bags of oatmeal, and you can have a lot of meals. And just uh, because it was it was in promotion or it's cheap, uh, some meat. Um, this is uh, not just regular meat. This is like a, a ham that you salted, salted and dried ham that you can uh, how do you say this? Keep a keep a little bit longer without refrigeration and some beer because why the fuck not? So if you if you can go to the store and buy some essentials uh, and this can be very cheap like this. This was not much money, and it's a year worth of food to say. All right, uh, if the stores are overrun or empty, there are still some other options you can do, and that is uh, like food that uh, food that they sell for animals. But uh, 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 in animals, how do we say this? In uh, farm and animal shops, uh, this is maybe not the best quality, but it's cheap, and you can get a lot of it. And you can use it for either your animals or either yourself uh, when times are hard. These are three, uh, three examples uh, I bought at the farm store today. Uh, there is a bag. Yeah, that's a bag of, of corn that I already used a lot of for my chickens. But it's cheap. It's meant for animals. But you can use it to make corn yourself in a large uh, amount. So that's, uh, not, uh, that's the thing you can do. Uh, these are carrots. Uh, this is a whole bag like five kilos of carrots, uh, which was very, very cheap because it's not the best quality. But if you cut out the bad pit, the bits and you store it right, like in sand, dry sand, you can uh, you can uh, get a lot. You can still uh, use these carrots for your own foods if, and already and cook it right. Cook it right that no pathogens are still left. All right. That's something you can do. And of course, uh, a bag of flour. This is not for animals, but uh, it was in the it was in the farm store. So a whole bag of flour. Uh, this is like twenty kilograms, and yeah, I can bake a lot of bread with this. I think almost for a uh, half a year, if I'm on my own. So a bag of flour, very cheap, and a alternative way to get breads because. Yeah, during a war, breads can be hard to find either because bakeries cannot get supplied or the bake local bakery have uh, been blown up or the people will not work at the, during those dangerous times or they flee. So that's something that you can also do. Uh, before, before a war starts, it's best to uh, get some chickens. Uh, you can get a rooster, some chickens. Three hens on one rooster is the good ratio. And yeah. You, you can you can use them for meat uh, if you can uh, get chicks from it and of course eggs every day some eggs and they do not need a lot of food so 
that's uh, something handy you can do uh, bef uh, before a war starts. So gardening uh, will be a very important part of uh, uh, to invest in before a war starts to get like the the things uh, the th the grow the growing uh, beds the seeds the tools that you will need to um, to grow in a part of your own food I do I do not expect that um, that a lot of people will be able to grow in a lot of food but every meal you make your own is a meal that you save out and I uh, will and you can last you make your supplies uh, last longer so some uh, growing beds can be a very good investment um, so invest in seeds, grow beds and tools like I said before before the war starts always have a supply of water uh, inside uh, in a good uh, of course uh, storage place but uh, these things uh, will not be how do you say this it will not it will not last forever but it's a good thing uh, especially during a war where there is a uh, a risk for uh, radiation or chemical or biological attacks so that you do not need to water from outside like if the rain is contaminated or the the public uh, water supply is uh, being sabotaged or something at least then you have enough water to uh, last for a, a long for a long time during a bug in so buy water when you can if you can before a war starts like you probably already seen in my videos uh, this is one of the best things you can have for uh, for uh, gaining water during a bug in. So invest in a in a Berkey water filter. Uh, with this thing, this will filter everything: uh, pathogens uh, like viruses, bacteria, uh, metals, medicines. Uh, it can filter almost everything. Uh, also, it can even filter uh, some uh, radiological uh, part particles. So even during a nuclear war, it can be life-saving, this device. You just put rainwater in the top and it will go through a filters. It will go through filters and drip inside of this uh, thing. Uh, yeah, so it's it's quite an investment, to be honest. But it's one of with this thing, you have 11 years of uh, drinkable water from rainwater. So, and it will uh, filter out everything. So it can save money in that long time. And it's one of the best preventive uh, things you can buy before a war starts. Uh, another important thing uh, to invest uh, before a war starts is medicine and uh, first aid. Uh, why? Because during a war there is always a shortage of uh, medical supplies um, and medicine because yeah, uh, supply uh, routes can be stopped or blockade embargoes or will be too expensive or uh, will be go to the government and military first before civilians. So just uh, invest in uh, some medicine. Like you can see, these are the, all the all my most of my medicines. Just look in my video about medical preparedness to get into details. So these are medicines. These are just uh, bandages, bandages and, and appliances like a stethoscope, uh, a dental dental care. Uh, uh, sur surgical uh, impro um, basic surgical kit and such these are just some other medical supplies and these are just some crutches shoulder crutches a uh, field bed for uh, when somebody's wounded in and you need to watch them inside of the house crutches like uh, and al I also have a how do you say this um, a wheelchair so this is something you can do for the community if you are prepared because if somebody is wounded and professional medical care is not uh, around you can try to help them put something like this on your shoulder so you're not uh, you will not become a target if you try to lend a hand try to help people during a war a military think you're an insurgent or a guerrilla so this can be very handy to put on your shoulder uh so that you're that they see that you're not a combatant so uh, yeah, medical is a medical uh, supplies is something to invest in before a war, uh, which not many people think about besides bandages. So, uh, yeah. So the energy will be a problem during war. So try to be preventive and uh, look for ways to make uh, to cook water and cook food uh, without the need for electricity or gas lines. Uh, what you there are two options you can uh, three options actually you can do perhaps uh, first of all is 
This is a simple one. This is one of those uh, camping little camping stoves that work on gas. Just if you have one of these, and uh, you can buy some of those uh, cartridges with gas, with butane gas or propane, uh, very cheap. You can buy them in big, but I find it safer to have uh, one of those uh, smaller ones instead of those big ones because if then if there's something's going wrong with those, uh, you have a big problem. Safety before everything. If you want to prevent uh, fire in your house because of these things, uh, look at my video about how to prevent fire for uh, for preppers. The next thing you can do is a uh, this is a a little portable stove, a wood stove. Uh, which I can use inside uh, if I uh, connect if I connect the pipe with the outside. So it's an improvised stove. I can use this ins inside if I have a window. I can use this in my ports. I can use this outside in a garage. I can fold it up, uh, put a uh, take the pipes uh, of each other, put it in, and take them even with me on a bug out. So uh, wood stove is a very handy uh, way to make to cook foods and water. Um, also try to uh, like find a way to get firewood. Um, during the year I would advise to find a place at your home that is safe uh, in a spot that will not uh, burn that easy, that will not uh, be a fire hazard and get some, uh, at uh, some enough wood to last at least a year I would say. Um, that's why, al why also I like to use a wood stove. You can also use the biolit that I uh, uh, show, showed in my uh, many times in my videos about bugging out, but that's something that you always use to have to use outside. These are the things you can use inside of your house, uh, which can be more safer and of, and it's more comfortable because of weather. So uh, a wood stove or a little gas stove is a very handy preventive middle uh, tool to get before a war starts. Uh, electricity like a will be probably will be running out or because of supplies uh, problems or perhaps because of a bombardment or attack. Uh, electricity will be not be sufficient or will be absent. So a way to make electricity is uh, as a must have uh, as a pre preventive uh, measurement. Like you can see, this is my, uh, these are my solar panels, uh, which I used to uh, to load up uh, these batteries, which I can charge my uh, small electrical devices like my cell phones, laptop and such. So that's a good investment before a war to, to do uh, in case the electricity go down. The same thing uh, applies for uh, to make elect electricity or use appliance that will work this way. Like you can see, these are radios that will charge during the day with their solar panels or they have a crank, a little crank that you can uh, charge, charge them up. You also have, uh, how do you say this, uh, lights. Uh, you can help by hands or uh, lamps that you put in a garden or in house that you can crank up uh, to make uh, to charge their battery. That's uh, those are good things to invest in. Um, like we can see, you can also try to uh, try to install a wind turbine, which is handy because. You can make electri electricity during the air. But as you, if you can see, I'm still fucking around with this uh, wind turbine. I'm not the biggest, uh, I'm not big brained in the electric department, so it will take some time for me to install this thing. But something simple as solar panels, even if it's one of those small ones, can, can be an advantage during, uh, for blackouts during, uh, before and during a war. Uh, during every war, there is always a shortage or shortage of uh, fuel for civilians. So, and even before a war, because of uh, bad news or the stock market, um, yeah, fuel will be more expensive. So, not only for the expense because it's more expensive, but also because it's probably will run out before uh, before and during a war because of people will. During the Ukraine, uh, I saw. Every gas station before the before the night, they said gas prices would go up. At every gas station, even in the middle of the night, I saw lines and lines of people trying to get to fill their car up before. So always have uh, as a preventive measure for war. Always have uh, fuel ready uh, in uh, cherry cans. Uh, even though 
if you don't use uh, will not use a car as a bug out vehicle it can it can be a good uh, bartering tool or something to help people out uh, yeah what you also can do with uh, fuel that you stored is a uh, uh, when the light when the electricity goes down have a little generator uh, that you and and that you can use for powering your things up you know when there is a blackout that will certainly will happen before war so invest in a generator it's a good alternative or in an emergency when you need electricity for some reason don't forget uh, you do not only put fuel in this but also uh, oil uh, which is needed otherwise it will uh, break so uh, fuel and oil is a good thing to keep in stock uh, try to also to stock it in a safe way that you don't get a fire hazard or uh, when there is an accident happening before a war uh, it's best to invest in some candles uh, like you uh, like yeah, yeah, like you see in my previous video, uh, probably these are a buttload of uh, candles. Uh, I prefer tea candles. Uh, why? Because they burn efficiently. You have, if you have something like this, like a big candle, it will burn in the middle, and the site will always be lost. You can, yeah, of course, you can make new candles out of those uh, wax that went lost. But uh, I prefer these because these are whole and more easy to use. Uh, yeah, buy those uh, in uh, bulk if you can. They are more cheap, and you can uh, with this uh, amount. I have a year worth of uh, candlelight. Uh, yeah, and there are also things you can do like, like you can see with this. This is one of those uh, lanterns that you can use as a portable light if you have tea candles, which is also very useful. Uh, other ways to make lights is uh, just. This is one of those cold zero lights. If you can probably see, it has a a crank. So you have you have lights, electric lights that you can charge during the day. Oh. And of course, uh, if you got fuel uh, like petroleum or uh, like for heating or something, you can use the, you can buy one of these uh, storm lanterns, bit old fashioned, but they work. But the downside is they use petroleum as fuel. A fuel will be more expensive or harder to find during uh, before a war. So uh, before a war, uh, like I said so many times before, uh, electricity will be will become expensive. Will there will probably be blackouts or the electricity will just fall out because of reasons of war. Uh, therefore, invest in heat because yeah, gas. Uh, fuel, uh, public electricity will not be available, so electric uh, making warm inside of your house will become very, very uh, important, especially when there is a when there is war will be during the winter. So uh, just invest in the basic things for getting heat. You can make improvised uh, heaters like out of tea candles, but just uh, this is a list of the best things you can invest in for not only you and your but also your family and your children. Uh, wool, 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 and yet again wool. Woolen socks, a woolen, a woolen sweater. Uh, yeah, these are uh, uh, Swiss uh, uh, claw, uh, mittens, uh, which are waterproof. But these are not a wool. But if they were, they would be more awesome. Um, in my, in an emergency case, because yeah, perhaps some you have visitors that or people that are hurt or you need you want to help other people in the community. Uh, a stack of these uh, emergency blackens can help a lot of some, if your neighbor's house has been bombarded or something. So these can also be very handy or you can use them to to uh, put before doors and windows to so keep, to keep the heat that is already inside uh, more inside. Uh, a shemak, you can do a lot of things. Look in my video about what do 55 survival uses of a shemak. A woolen blanket. Very important. Uh, this thing will keep you warm even when you are wet or or uh, there are damp situations. So woolen blankets very important. Uh, the trench coats. Uh, look into my video about trench coats. Uh, so yeah, this is uh, one amazing thing, especially during a bug out. Uh, yeah. So keeping warm with wool is uh, a very good uh, thing to invest in before a war will start. Uh, tools will be very important because. Yeah, shops. Uh, the tool, the tool shops will uh, probably run out, or will not be open, or will have supplies problems, or will be too expensive actually. So, as a preventive measurement, I would say uh, get some tools, uh, even if it's a basic kit of tools. You can also get some, one of those uh, 
like like you can see here this is a drill that you can crank up and manually these are two drills i got all almost all uh, most of my um uh tools are non electric uh i know it you cannot do them you cannot do everything with it but you can repair your house after a, an impact of a strike or uh when it has been damaged during a battle so that's a good preventive uh, thing you can do Doing the laundry is still important during a war because you can get dusty mud and electricity will, will uh, probably be blacked out. So in that case, uh, like you can see, this is my uh, my uh, washing machine. Uh, machine is a big word, but it's my washing plunger, uh, buckets, uh, soap, gloves, and some uh, other soap that I have. But this way you can uh, do your laundry without the need of uh, uh, electricity. So. Look at my video about uh, how to do your laundry, uh, how to wash your clothes uh, off grid, and this is a good, a very good uh, alternative when uh, the washing when the electricity goes down. Uh, books will be very important before a war, so uh, because perhaps internet will fall out or be sabotaged by a cyber attack, or uh, there is no electricity to cut internet, uh, so you. Uh, you got two uh, good uh, advantages from this uh, from a supply of books that you already have in in a personal library. First of all, just for recreational, because yeah, television, internet, radio will not be that big. How do you say this? Will not be that exciting during a war because of propaganda or uh, misinformation or because uh, entertainment is not not uh, the most creative that way. But so for uh, just to pass some time. On a, on a, in a way, it's a good way to relax. Another thing is, um, like this, this section here are all military uh, uh, manuals. Um, yeah, and also, and the the rest are survival, uh, um, also survival manuals uh, about several subjects like uh, how to build stuff, how to uh, grow a garden, how to make, uh, how to uh, make and repair stuff first aid and so and so and so on uh, information will be important because like i said before internet could be not be reliable uh, source because of electricity or uh, cyber attacks so uh, how to do all the things yourself is very important uh, like i said before repairs making stuff at your own house instead of buying it of or uh, buying it in a wartime economy which can be very difficult because of supplies or uh, higher prices and the second thing is the military hand and and uh, manuals are very important because you can learn about what's to come. You can learn about military doctrines and try to learn the science. What will soldiers do in certain situations? Uh, what uh, what military equipment uh, is, and so and so on. What tactics, psychological warfare, how they use it, and tactics that military use to survive. All those things can be very important to uh, to learn uh, before a war starts to know because knowledge is power and that way you can know how to react and prepare for for such and such so another thing that not many people think about uh, before a war starts is uh, to invest in uh, anti-conception and protection uh, protection against uh, stds uh, why because yeah you don't want a wartime baby during the stress, the shortages, the food, uh, the supply problems, you do not want to go through a pregnancy, especially when uh, medical professional help is not uh, available. So have a way to prevent uh, having a uh, having an accident or having a baby, because people will will still have sex even before and during a war. Uh, this will uh, be so have several ways like condoms, the pill. Uh, in worst case, a morning after pill ready in case uh, something like that happens. So, yeah, that's something to invest in before a war starts. Uh, another thing uh, probably to think about is, uh, yeah, it's perhaps not that, uh, that not such a pretty truth. But uh, during war, pre before a war, there will be big economic economic problems, especially during a war when people lost their house or they cannot pay for basic stuff anymore, a lot of women uh, will become desperate and they will turn to prostitution. So 
if you invest in uh, condoms, uh, that way you can uh, perhaps, as a woman, make money during a war and protect yourself against pregnancy and, and sexual transmitted diseases. I know it's not that, uh, not that pretty to talk about, and not a lot of people would think they will do it, but during a war, a lot of women uh, had to go through that. So if you, even if the chance is small, try to uh, be prepared for that uh, during a war. Yet again, not a pretty truth, but uh, this will happen in war. Um, people will die. Um, this is a body bag. Uh, yeah, I know it sounds kind of grim, but when there are bombardments, there are battles, uh, People, innocent people will get hit by a lost bullet, a, a mislead grenade or rocket, or uh, by war crimes, or and such and such. There will be casualties, and uh, yeah, the morgues and the and the government will not always be able to help directly uh, because they got other uh, fish to fry, to say. So you will have to, in a way, prepare for death. Um, how do you do this? Um, yeah, for your own thing, I would say, like like the show before with the chip, you can put your information on it and also your will in case you die. So that's something you can have a peace of mind before in case you will uh, become a vic uh, victim of war. So, yeah, that's something to think about. I know it's not that uh, pretty to think about, but, yeah, it happens, and everyone thinks they're the hero in their, in their own story. But during a war, a lot of civilians die. So prepare for that. Put your information on a ship, like your will and your last wishes, or a message to your family and friends and uh, kids or partner. And yet again, like I said before, the body bag, because if somebody in the neighborhood dies because of a bombardment, uh, and, and you cannot put them into the morgue or there are too many victims, you can bury them temporarily in a place and that way you can prevent diseases and the smell and the demoralizing uh, look of a corpse and you cannot always have a fridge to put them in. So a body bag, you can store them in a, in a cool dark place or bury them. So always also have a shovel ready uh, and a way to identify the victim Try to put uh, a na try to put uh, make pictures of the place where he died. Try to make pictures of the person who died. Try to take a picture of their personal information, and that way you can uh, testify later on what happened uh, for official reg registration documents, and also uh, leave some identification with the body itself. Put uh, like a dog tag or a piece of metal or wood. On, on their body with their personal information so if they are being dug up later you can retrieve them to give them a proper burial or give them back to their family uh, that way or put a cross with their name on it uh, above the grave so it's for e uh, easy identifications I know it's not pretty but it's a reality that will uh, unfortunately happens a lot all right uh, so this was my the first part of uh, how to survive a war as a civilian and uh, I hope you learned something from this uh, and you will take account in it. And yeah, you will probably see a, a lot of things that have uh, been shown in this in this part that uh, I've said before. But yeah, preparing can be preparing for one thing uh, can be universal to other scenarios. So uh, subscribe, like, uh, I would appreciate it. Give a reaction if you think that uh, there are other things to invest in or to take uh, measurements before a war even starts. Uh, leave it in the comments and uh, yeah, I can learn from it too, as well. Or if people have their own experiences with war, what uh, what details do you did you notice? Uh, yeah, so uh, thank you for watching and see you in the next video.